Everybody, this is part two of a composition called Dual Tones. Uh, it's um, a study of 11 wonderful colored um, objects which are available to one and all. Uh, these I happen to have bought in the King Cullen Market in St. James. And uh, we have a, a sort of a semi-abstract beginning. Uh, I, I, I'm thinking that possibly the uh, the electronic wonder of what we can do with this is to take this and sort of show you what it's like um, kind of superimposed or next to the composition itself to show you how you reduce the details of a, of a, of a collection of objects like this and there you have it. It, you, it dissolved into the real one and then you saw the painting of it. Now this is second part is going to be to show you how you would uh, put the details and the so-called three-dimensional look on a composition um, of these objects to get away from the uh, from the impressionistic approach. Uh, impressionism is wonderful and I find myself always drawn to it very much but then I also think that the illusion that you try to create with uh, realistic painting is to make you believe that this flat uh, thing here has got rounded objects on it. That's the challenge, I believe, with still life painting to try and make it um, to try and make it uh, real looking. So take one last look uh, at this uh, pure layout of color. That's all this is. Now come the details to try and make it. Uh, look as if it's in the it's, uh, as if it's uh, in three dimensions. I'm going to do that by first of all doing the obvious, adding the highlight on the avocado, and see whether or not that works. See whether or not the uh, the brilliant the um, the avocado. Um, I'm seeing a shadow that's different than you are seeing it on that detail. The the shadow that I the, I mean the highlight that I'm seeing is actually long and skinny and follows the form of the avocado. The uh, the um, the simplicity with which one does this is the point uh, that I'm going to be trying to make because you don't want to agonize over it. Here's another one, but it's a lesser, it's a different color. The, um, this highlight is a different color on the avocado, slightly green. Um, that, that is one very quick sample of how you can make uh, an object look as if it's in the third dimension. I'm going to add the little tiny detail of the uh, nub on this uh, on this avocado to show you that the um, the realism is done in many ways, tiny tiny details and then larger ones. But here's the little nub of that avocado at the end of it. That's more than there was before. That's more than there was before I began doing the approach of how how to make it look three dimensional. There is another. Um, there is another detail. There is a rather sharp uh, a line on, on the, underneath it because of the double lights here, and that um, that will give you another feeling about the intensity of the shadow and the fact that the shadow is not just plain gray, but it also has a dark tone to it. Um, working along towards the next one, because time, uh, you know, is. Um, it works very hard here in the studio. It's, it matters to creep along and the next thing you know the entire half hour has been consumed. There is a shadow on the edge of this pear which is being cast by the avocado. It's sort of conforming, and we get a smaller brush to do that. It conforms to the shape of the, um, of the pear 
but it's coming from the fact that the uh, the avocado is throwing a curved shape around the uh, around the edge of this pear. Um, it's uh, it's. It's a lovely detail, and it also gives you a, a, an almost an immediate three-dimensional look about it. Um, it, it, it. It ends there, and then on this side, the pear has got some rather dark, a, a rather dark side to it. So we're now losing the so-called impressionist look of the just plain plain of color. It's being given some form, the form being the addition of the shadow. Um, there is a little bit of a shadow running down here, which be, is because the, um, the light is coming from two different sources. Uh, naturally, what has shadow has highlight. And the highlight on the pair is minimal, but it's there nevertheless. It's a little, it's a little dot up here on the top, on the top of the pair, and uh, running down a little bit along the side. Uh, sort of in you uh, know because the pear's surface is not as smooth as the avocado, but that that and here's another little a, a little highlight in the bulge in the bottom of the pear. This has already now begun to look a little bit more three-dimensional than it did before. The the uh, the same kind of a dark line is uh, also uh, being cast by the uh, by the pear, which separates it from the pale gray uh, shadow, which was put in as a um, as the abstract uh, shadow indication. But this dark line separates it. So we now have two um, of the uh, of the objects that have been given a three-dimensional look. This shadow uh, fades off. Well, that brush is wrong. Let me see if I can find a better one here. This one needs to be um, it needs to be um, uh, diminished here. It, it fades off, and uh, that's the realism thing, uh, whereby you differentiate between the sharp shadow and the one that blends. When it blends, it makes you give it gives you the illusion that it's going around the corner. I need a little bit more dark back here. Um, so. This is the this is the object lesson of uh, of not just the, the 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 color application, but also the application of uh, the, the, the three dimensions, which is what realist painting is all about. There are some wonderful American realist painters uh, by the name of Raphael. Uh, the the um, Raphael and Rembrandt Peel, P-E-A-L-E. -E. There are some wonderful books in the library about the American still life painting uh, era. Uh, they were the masters of it. And uh, if anybody is interested in it, by all means, go and find the Peel brothers and find out whether or not, I, it's sort of a funny uh, name to have when you're dealing with vegetables. But uh, they are the, uh, they are the, considered the, um, the American masters. The Spanish masters were a man, a man called Zurbaran. He was absolutely amazing. Uh, he did uh, some wonderful realist work uh, back in the very, very early days in the 1600s. And those paintings are, of course, now in all the museums of the world. And they, um, they are classics within themselves. Here are those little highlights at the top of that pepper. And another one back here. Some of the darkness in the pepper is underneath, which of course I'll get to right now. And uh, the uh, a lot of people are not drawn to um, uh, still life painting. They call it dead life. Well, it's hardly dead life. It certainly is um, a a lesson is great. Lesson is learned in still life painting because if you can master the look of a uh, of an object that has this these turns, uh, the next natural thing that follows is portrait painting, because um, all of these turns are what cheeks do and chins and shoulders, and. Um, and legs and so on. Uh, so if you practice on, on these objects and learn how to blend and make them appear to be three-dimensional, uh, the next, uh, the next uh, um, phase is to go into something far more complex, and that is portraiture. But um, it's all the basic, the basic information is all here in the handling of these objects. Well, there is uh, there is a very cursory and and simplified way of approaching this uh, show. Oh, I find I see that this is somewhat dark over here. For some reason or another, there is a there is a dark blend at the um, on that side, even though it's bathed in light. So, the very pale yellow green of this um, of this stem that comes out here can be put in very quickly, like so, uh, because and then there's a sort of a white end to it where it was cut, and there we have that. Um, progressing along because 
uh, shadows are important. Here with a little bit of alizarin crimson on this very, uh, as I said in the earlier part of the show, these strange things called pink potatoes. This shadow is being called, uh, made by the uh, presence of this white eggplant and it conforms to the shape of the, um, of the uh, potato and runs across here. The shadow of it, of course, is a little bit darker than the skin of the potato itself. So the, here we have the illusion that this potato is round merely by the presence of its shadow. Uh, always very interesting to me, and I hope possibly interesting to people who maybe and the only concern they have about a pink potato is, is it going to cook up well? Uh, here is a, here is the, um, here is the uh, example of how shadows are going to make the third dimensional look take place. There is a little bit of a shadow back here that blends all very subtly as it, as it turns around. And then there is, of course, a highlight somewhere, very pale, not much, but something of a highlight, and it hugs the shadow. So let's see if that works. And it has to be very subtly done. And maybe this little potato will take on some, some form, oh, some shape. The, uh, the eye of the potato, of course, is important because it's the anatomy of the potato and it gets just maybe a suggestion. You don't have to concentrate too hard on it, but an eye here and there may, may tell the story that that is, in fact, a potato. Um, Progressing to the pear next to it, of course, there's a great deal of darkness in, in what you're seeing, and I had probably better stick that darkness in there because the edge of the pear is, uh, is delineated by the darkness on the potato. There we have that much. Good. That makes it look even rounder. Uh, carrying on to the other, to another shadow that is going to get, determine the shape of the pear is this one that is being cast by the yellow pepper. And that also does the same thing that it did on the, uh, on the potato. Uh, it conforms to the shape and it, and it picks up the shape of the, of the uh, yellow uh, pepper. The, the, uh, the apple has a, I mean, the pear has a rather, uh, rather pronounced shadow because it's, um, it's in, it's in such brilliant light that the shadow becomes even, even more intense. The shadow side, rather, becomes even more intense. And the three-dimensional look is, uh, is gotten rather simply, quite easily, uh, by the uh, introduction of that shadow. And of course, the final, the final will be the highlight, which is um, not that brilliant, but it is nevertheless there. Uh, and it's got something to do with the texture of the, um, of the fruit. Somewhat, it's, it's sort of mottled. Well, going on to the hugely uh, and, and very, very deep tone. I picked this apple purposely. It was one of the darkest of the bunch. Just because it was so dark, I wanted to make a point of the fact that um, this is a, 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 a very dramatic addition to this, uh, to this composition. The inside of its little, of its little uh, stem place is pale. And it also has a very sharp highlight right there, and then the highlight that is on the, that is on the, uh, what I call the shoulder of the apple is, is very intense, and there's virtually no shading whatsoever because it's already extremely dark. The only thing that I will do is to put that, uh, that stem in through, now this is what had the, in through the, um, the, the light part, and I think that that makes some sense. Maybe, maybe some mm, very, very deep, uh, deep blackish purple will uh, will make the um, will will work even more so with this composition. Let's see if this, if even though it's already black, if I make it even blacker, yes, it will do it. So that's a combination of the uh, alizarin crimson and some of the deep um, uh, spectrum purple that comes right out of the tube. Here we are, good, underneath here. So. Uh, progressing through the business of adding detail to all of these things is um, uh, uh, an object lesson in the difference between something which is uh, slightly, uh, really rather heavily misunderstood uh, by uh, just the general public that abstract art is a fake. Abstract art is not a fake, it merely deals with the business of eliminating detail. Um, so. But they need to take a very short break. Um, I'll be right back.
you are back again and here we're going to I'm going to uh, start to move over towards this um this uh yellow pepper that has uh, that has got an identity problem uh, you know it doesn't really uh, it doesn't really uh, resolve into any particular color and it's a lovely blend of tones it's got uh, it's got all the greens and the reds and the yellows and the oranges and the pinks and so on and the highlights so it's really it's, it's actually a rather more complex piece and I'm going to you know do the best I can in a short space of time to show you how you would approach this the basic color was put on in part one of this program and now this, the addition of these varying tones is uh, I'm doing now uh, because it's uh, actually a rather good way of being able to get the um, get the blend of these tones, putting the whole basic color on, and then uh, and then blocking in the blending tones. If the paint is still somewhat wet, you'll find that the that the blocking in uh, can take place with comparative ease, and the blend, which may be intimidating to some, can be done uh, without too much effort um, or without too much. Trauma. So the um, and 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 besides that, the uh, the need to be realistic is is fine, and that's what the whole point of this program is. But there comes comes a point where you would have to uh, be selective about the amount of detail. This turns into something rather dark here, which I'm not even questioning. I'm going to put it in anyway. It's doubtlessly because it's had something. Some shadow is playing around from the avocado, and underneath here we have the uh, that strange turn that these peppers take. And there we have so on. Okay, uh, I think that's probably enough detail for now. There, um, maybe a little bit darker here, and uh, looks like the the end of the stem is uh, is really quite dark. So, yes, it is. There we have it. Now, the highlights, of course, are going to uh, are going to determine some of the three-dimensional look and the highlight of course is multiple because of the uh, because of the studio lights uh, probably in in my studio I wouldn't have these multiple uh, highlights uh, but they they are they're interesting and they tell you where you are uh, the highlights are just uh, conform to the shape of all these bumps and and uh, turns in here and uh, that gives you the illusion of what you're looking at here there's a there's a nice long sort of highlight around the around the top of it. Um, uh, progressing as quickly as one must uh, to the uh, somewhat incomprehensible form of this um, ginger, um, you have to make sure that this color is, uh, is the right one and I think that it's got a cast, it's got a sort of a semi strange cast of color, a little bit green at the same time as being very tan. And the uh, the shadow is being cast by the pear, and it's quite dark, and it uh, covers almost a good part of the whole the whole uh, two arms of this thing. Um, but the shadow is what's going to make you maybe understand what it is that we're looking at. Um, it's uh, it's a it's a very funny piece, and it's got wonderful culinary advantages, but it's a, probably a nightmare to paint. And I'm trying to try to pull it off as quickly as I can. Speaking of still life paintings, uh, there is also another school which um, I wish that the schools, uh, you know, namely the uh, the education schools, not just art schools, would deal with these painters and these schools of painting. I think the kids would have a great deal of wonderful information to go on with later on and not be so totally left out of the uh, field of painting uh, in schools. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that the art courses have been reduced down to the simplest possible denomination of just letting the kids play with color instead of telling them uh, about some of these wonderful classic painters and let them look at them. They don't have to spend a, a tremendous amount of time, but just to sort of understand how important observation is in the general uh, business of living here. We, um, we are given the opportunity to see all these things when we're sighted. Uh, it's the blind people that sometimes turn out to see more than we do because they because they have to compensate. There are some wonderful looking uh, veins and things in this in the ginger and if it doesn't if it if it does if it isn't totally comprehensible it's because this particular piece needs more detail than the peppers and the uh, pears because it is so such an incomprehensible uh, strange object. But um, uh, maybe when I as I've been asked sometimes to refine these things and to uh, make uh, make them 
you know, ready for framing type of finishing, the um, the pepper will take a little bit of time. But it is, uh, it's, and here, interestingly enough, I just happened to notice, here is the shadow of the pear's uh, stem that is running across this thing. Uh, so observation to me is almost a game. It's a, dis a game of discovery. There is the shadow of the pear stem right there. Good. All right. Now I'm going to progress on to the uh, to the um, the yellow uh, pepper here that has a great deal of shadow because it's next to the uh, ginger, and it's uh, it's important that this shadow be put in here uh, because of the uh, same uh, d desire to make this look as though it's in three dimensions. Uh, even though it's a very pale object, it's still going to have some intense shadow. And underneath it's more intense than you could possibly uh, envision if, if you were doing this from memory, which of course I don't think that anybody is gifted in this visual retention to be able to remember exactly what all of these objects do. So painting from memory is, in my opinion, far more difficult than painting from life. All the information that you need is right in front of you. All you have to do is to refer to it. So once again, I'm going to push the, uh, the need to paint from life. Uh, not only do you get a lovely opportunity to, 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 to discover things, but it's also, uh, it's also a wonderful training for details in other phases. I think that people who, uh, musicians, tend to uh, gravitate toward painting a great deal. Uh, because uh, details in painting are very similar uh, in the visual uh, as opposed to the audio approach to, um, to music. And I think that maybe there is a correlation there between being able to uh, pay attention to detail. The, this fades off here. Uh, there are some, as usual, some nice brilliant highlights and they are they take place exactly exactly the way they did on the orange one they're here at this at this point that information is right in front of me i don't have to invent it there's a little bit of a of a blended one down there and there are two more there are two more up here uh one because of multiple lights and two so uh the um uh, the uh Eggplant is a real mystery. I mean, that is very, uh, very interesting and very peculiar. And it's got uh, the need for concentrating on this shadow to understand what this uh, strange looking uh, white sort of bleached out looking thing is. And, um, but it will have a highlight, even though it's sort of cream colored, it's called a white one, but it isn't actually white. I'll show you what white is. White is what the highlight is going to get. But the shadow is definitely in need to make it um, to make it comprehensible, and it's quite smooth. This is a very smooth object, uh, and the shadows, of course, are going to be smooth as well. Down here, the um, the gray kind of gets lost in the uh, in the outline of the ginger, but it is still there. And down here, there's, some, there's a sort of an insinuation of a shadow on a pale object. But the white uh, highlight, of course, is um, you're going to see how the white highlight is going to give it a, I hope that shows. I, yes, I, I think that shows. Uh, and here, there's, a, there's the top of the stem. That's maybe a little bit too bright, but uh, here's the top of the stem. Now, now, there is a darkness uh, in, the, um, in the top of this sort of a strange and homely looking thing that uh, should be paid attention to. It, um, it gives you some feeling about the texture, but it also gives you the, that famous elusive shadow that I'm talking about that gives the three-dimensional quality to just about everything. And that, that little stem that is looking at us if foreshortened uh, is throwing its shadow in this direction. Very mysterious. Also very, uh, very fun to discover. The um, the uh, the last one here is the uh, long and uh, very uh, peculiar shaped um, hot pepper. It is uh, it's got a uh, it's got a line of uh, of very bright green uh, running through it. Uh, it can be done in an interpretive way, uh, and then the highlights, of course, are going to give that same uh, nice uh, illusion of um, of dimension to it. The top of it is somewhat pale, and then the dark parts are uh, quite dark. There's a fold in here that, that it, it sort of does something. It turns funny, and then there is a fold here, or there's a dark part here. All a question of of um, 
discovery. And uh, by golly, I think the discovery is probably within the age of television, when you're given all the information that you could ever want in your whole life in one, one fell swoop. Uh, I think the discovery has become a lost game. But um, to rediscover discovery is what I think uh, is what I think I may be after at this point. And uh, the observation uh, is a, is a vital part of the whole of the whole business. Here is, uh, here is I'm, I will n not get to the uh, genuinely and crazy um, uh, off the wall type of abstract approach. First of all, there is no time. And secondly, it would be, be a subject of another nice program to show you abstract in its most pure form, whereby you will, like avant-garde music, uh, to all the melody is lost and all you get then is interpretation. Um, the last and final thing is probably just uh, um, showing you the need to have even more intense shadows because of this multiple lighting that we that I did up there in the um, in the uh, avocado. But uh, that that shadow is evident again. Here it is uh, underneath the pear, quite dark under the pear, and then also underneath this this pepper. Uh, it uh, the uh, the deep the deep shadow is playing underneath the pepper as well. Well. Uh, as usual, uh, we have, uh, I have exhausted the time and uh, used up every moment of it, uh, I hope to advantage. The, um, the uh, game that I play with the color and perspective and three-dimensional three things is all got to do with the fact that I'm a realist who investigates uh, observation. I think that probably uh, whatever I'm doing is uh, is going to uh, rem remain with you whether you are conscious of it or not whenever you sit down to paint. Well, there it is. We've done it again. Come to the end of a much too quick program. Part two of my dual tones composition of fruits and vegetables at the height of this wonderful harvest season. Uh, I'm glad you tuned in. I hope you do again and again. This is Pat Windrow saying bye-bye.